So I'm going to briefly just talk about the concept of iteration. So in, we use this word all the time, right? And we want to think about it, let's say, as the process of modifying an object repeatedly. Or maybe we want to think about it as the process of walking through an object in order to gain some sort of information from that object. So a list simply is full of stuff, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or 789, doesn't really matter. We could, for example, walk through this list and we could say the zero index, we're going to increment it by one and let's do that. The uh, one index, we're in going to increment by one. You can imagine this is going to take a long time if we want to add one to every value in this list, right? But this is our iteration, right? This is, you know, the first step of our iteration, the second step, the third step. And notice that the step of the iteration corresponds to the index of the list. So that should be a pretty straightforward concept. And the, the way that we perform iteration generally in programming languages is with uh, loops. So we're going to start with a for loop in the next lesson. And later we're going to discuss while loops. And I'm going to repeat this many times probably. Um, default to for loops. If you find yourself tempted to use a while loop, ask yourself a couple times do I need a while loop here? Can I do this with a for loop? If you can do it with a for loop, do it with a for loop. It's not only more efficient, you, it's, it's easier to understand. So there are problems that use while loops. You know, there are certain types of problems that use while loops, but most problems don't need these. Unless maybe it's an open-ended problem or you don't know how many times you need to do something. So I'm just saying it now to start because I'm going to say it a few more times. Default to for loops. Avoid while loops unless you know what you're doing with it, unless you're pretty sure that you would prefer or need a while loop. So iteration. I like to think of iteration as just walking through a data structure, right? You're just walking through a data structure. And in this case, we're starting at the zero index, we're going to the one index, then the two index, the three index, four index, five index, etc. You can iterate through lists, you can iterate through a string, you can iterate through strings, you can iterate through dictionaries, sets, tuples, you know, uh, other complex data structures that, that you might define yourself, uh, pandas data frames, numpy arrays, you can iterate through all of these. Um, Iteration is not always what you want to do. For example, if you wanted to sum all the values in a list, like let's say this list, then let's say there's some sum and we started at zero and instead of adding one, we're gonna do this other thing where we say, well, sum is going to be incremented by the value at zero and then by the value at one and then by the value at two, et cetera, right? I'm not gonna write all those out. You could do this, you could do this. This is an iterative approach to making a summation, but Python gives us this really amazing function called sum, and we can just apply that. So avoid iteration if there is a more direct way to do it in the language, okay? So you know, unless you need to avoid strings, like I mentioned in a previous lesson. Uh, in, in this case, there are no strings, it's just integers in here. You can sum all these up. You don't need to do that one by one, you can use the sum function. However, if it needs to be more complex than this, if it's not just a simple summation, then you'll probably want to use iteration, but iteration is less efficient than using either these built-ins or using 
some other method, uh, could be a NumPy linear algebra method for achieving a solution to a problem. Having said that, you can solve almost any problem with iteration. And on your first pass of a problem, don't be afraid to do the thing that is less optimal. It's okay. Get to an answer. Get to a working solution before you optimize your solution. Don't worry about writing your optimal solution first. You can think of it as iterating on your first solution in order to get it more toward an optimal solution. So uh, iteration, yeah, walking through a problem, also iterating on a problem until you get to a better solution.